Hello guys. Uh, today our speaker is Professor Amitabh Bhirmani from Chennai Mathematical Institute. Uh, this is our uh, 108th uh, quantum aspects of space-time seminar. And he's going to speak about black hole hair removal for n equal to four CHL models. And um, we are welcoming Professor Vimani to give this talk. And it's, uh, I, we are hopeful we can able to learn something from this black hole hair removal topic. Uh, and thank you for agreeing to give this talk. And uh, Amitabh, you can start from your end. Thanks, thanks Anton, for the invitation. Um, uh, so the title of my talk is Black Hole Hair Removal for N equal to four CHL models. Um, I see that there are only students. So uh, please feel free to stop me for questions, comments. Uh, actually, I, I did not know uh, who the uh, audience will be. So uh, I have prepared my talk uh, as a seminar. Um, with 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 lot of introduction and simple calculations, but still it might be uh, whatever questions comments you have, you please let me know. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk. Uh, I will start with the introduction and motivation for this project, and then I will give a review of uh, uh, the papers on which our project is based. Then I will uh, discuss the supergravity analysis first, uh, because. Uh, um, as you will see, I mean, this is based on a puzzle and the, the supergravity analysis sort of sharpens the puzzle. Um, and then um, uh, I will give a, um, a slightly more detailed explanation of uh, what the puzzle is. This is the hair removal puzzle for the CHL models. And finally, uh, I will propose the resolution of the uh, puzzle. Okay, And I will end with the summary and feature directions. Okay, so... Uh, let me start with section one, introduction, motivation, and review. Uh, actually, before I start any uh, technical part, let me just say a few things about uh, the project itself. So this project grew out of a Chennai Strings meeting. Um, uh, Chennai Strings meeting is the annual meeting that we organize in Chennai. Uh, three institutes, so that we give talks to each other, and it generates good discussion. And this project grew out of uh, that discussion. Uh, this is based on a paper that I did with uh, Shubranil Chakrabarti, uh, Suresh Govind Rajan, uh, Yogesh Srivastava, who is at NICER, and uh, Shanmuga Priya, uh, who is a student at uh, CMI. So uh, uh, most of the calculations were done by Shanmuga Priya. So her work is uh, very important in this, uh, in this project. Okay. And other thing is that uh, uh, ours is one of the rare papers where uh, all three Chennai Institute's address are there. So Shubranil was at IMSC, Suresh was at uh, IIT Madras, and Shanmuga P. and I are at uh, uh, Chennai Mathematical Institute. Okay, uh, almost in the same week, uh, there was a concurrent paper by uh, Aradhita Chattopadhyay and Justin David. So um, uh, there is a very strong overlap uh, of our paper with this paper. Okay, uh, the, I mean, this paper does not have the supergravity analysis. We also have the supergravity analysis but uh, uh, there is a very strong overlap uh, uh, from the microscopic side. Okay, so let me start uh, with, the, uh, with the talk now. So uh, many of you uh, might have heard that black holes have hair, and this is uh, uh, famous, made famous in a statement by John Wheeler, uh, who said that black holes have no hair. And uh, often this statement is, uh, is uh, made precise in terms of the no hair theorems. Uh, the theorems, there are many versions of these theorems. Okay, So the theorems say that in the presence of no matter other than uh, Maxwell field, a black hole is completely described by the mass, electric charge, and magnetic charge, uh, and the spin uh, of the black hole. Um, one can make this even more general, like one can add scalar field uh, to the theory. And then again, one can argue that scalar field does not give rise to any hair for the curved black hole and for the other, other fields also. I mean, there are many versions of this uh, no hair theorem. Uh, it's, it's a big subject in itself. Okay, but the important point is that once you have complicated setups, like- So, uh, uh, Amitabh? Yeah. So why only Maxwell field, not the other? 
no any i mean other field depends on the dimensions i am just trying to make it as simple as possible okay uh, okay you are giving an example probably example yeah okay uh, i mean okay. in five dimensions you can have two form fields and then again you can have charges oh, okay, okay 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 yeah okay so for more complicated setups uh, involving uh, kluger klein dimensions or form fields fermions uh, black clear are possible and uh, um, and this is the topic of interest uh, uh, for this talk okay so let us just be more precise about what we mean by black hole here actually black hole here is also a phrase that has been abused a lot it has many various meanings depending on the context so in our context black hole here is defined as uh, smooth uh, normalizable uh, bosonic or fermionic uh, deformation of the black hole we say like fermionic some some fermionic field configuration outside the black hole so i call it degree of freedom so smooth normalizable bosonic or fermionic degree of freedom that lives entirely outside the horizon okay so uh, so you think of it a, a black hole like this and then outside the black hole there is uh, some scalar field or some uh, fermionic field or some field uh, which is non zero the field so is outside it, means it is far from the horizon yeah i mean at least in our project we will see that it it vanishes at the horizon and it has support only uh, outside the horizon okay yeah so it lives entirely outside uh, the horizon okay and what is important is that uh, the mode the mode should be smooth uh, that is to say if it back reacts then the ricci tensor uh, riemann tensor those quantities should be smooth normalizable which means that the field should go to zero uh, at infinity so there are many methods uh, for constructing uh, black hole here is a big subject and as i was saying i mean even the term black hole here itself has many meanings depending on the context uh, one is looked at okay so it's a, it's a big subject uh, so now uh, why are we interested in studying black hole here Uh, so we are interested in studying black hole here because we are interested in the issue of uh, black hole entropy from the microscopic point of view so in string theory black hole entropy is uh, uh, accounted for in terms of microscopic degrees of freedom and um, uh, the entropy is insensitive to the nature of the solution away from the horizon okay the 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 microstates of the black hole are thought to be inside the black hole and they are captured by the uh, geometry of the horizon and they are insensitive to the solution away from the horizon okay so now this means that if there are two black holes two different black holes uh, which have identical near horizon geometries okay so the near the geometry near the horizon is identical if you i mean even this phrase has a precise meaning near horizon geometry has a precise meaning one can take a limit and obtain the near horizon geometry so if these two black holes have identical near horizon geometries then this discussion suggests that they should have exactly the same degeneracies okay because the black hole entropy is captured by microscopic degrees of freedom uh, at the horizon and if two black holes have exactly the same near horizon geometry then they should have exactly the same degeneracy okay uh, unfortunately there is a apparent counter example uh, to this and the counter example is actually very generic and very simple so the counter example is you take a supersymmetric five dimensional black hole the so called a bmpv black hole in flat space and take the same black hole the same supersymmetric bmpv black hole in tobnet space and then you see that uh, if you do the counting uh, of uh, uh, microscopic indices for uh, bmpv black hole in flat space and bmpv black hole in tobnet space you find that the two answers are not the same uh, and this was a this was a this 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 raises a puzzle i mean this was a puzzle um so these authors um uh, benerji navamita benerji ipsita mandal and ashok sen uh, and dilip jatkar ashok sen and yogesh shrivastava they proposed a resolution of this uh, puzzle and they said that the resolution of this puzzle lies in the Uh, here so if one properly takes into account the contribution of the here and calculates the partition function coming from the here then uh, the bmpv black hole in flat space will have the same 
uh, microscopic indices as in the top net space. Okay, so, so this is the papers uh, on which our project is based, uh, motivated by this project, I mean, oh, motivated by these papers, uh, we, we did this project, which is uh, hair removal for general CHL models. Okay, so questions, comments on this part? Um, sir, sir, I have a question. Uh, yes. What is tabinet space? Uh, is it physical space? Yes, yes. So, okay. So top net space is also one of those concepts which is uh, uh, used a lot in a different context. So uh, here I'm interested in a Euclidean top net space. Uh, you, I, I will draw a picture. Uh, it's a space which has a, a circle uh, at infinity and this circle smoothly pinches to zero size uh, in the interior. Um, okay, so you think of uh, like uh, R3 times S1 at infinity and this S1 smoothly shrinks to zero size in the interior. So this is the top net space. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the question. Actually, I will be happy to take questions, comments. And, uh, 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 um, Amita, for uh, like, why particularly Euclidean? Oh, um, well, because, because the Euclidean top net space is R3 times S1, uh, it makes a connection to 4D black holes. If you put a, a BMPV, so BMPV black hole is a five dimensional black hole. Uh -huh. uh, if you put this black hole at the center of top net and because top net has this S1 direction at infinity, uh -huh. uh, it, it looks like it's, I mean, from a lower dimensional perspective, this is like a four dimensional black hole. Okay. So this is the reason. So the counter example is really uh, 5D versus 4D. Uh, you can think of okay, it like okay. 5D versus 4D, yeah. Okay, so motivated by this discussion, uh, we will. Be and discussing... what is the CHL model? You yeah, will yeah, talk about this, that. Okay. Yeah, this I will explain. What is okay. this? Okay. Yeah. okay, so now let me just say um, uh, what we have done in our paper and what I will be discussing in this talk. So in 2009, as I said, these authors, uh, Banerjee, Mandal, Jatkar, Sen, and Shivastava. Uh, they showed that the difference between 4D and 5D microscopic indices for 4D, 5D BMPV black hole can be accounted for by the hair modes. Um, so this paper did very, very impressive calculations. Uh, uh, um, uh, but in these papers, the rotation of the black holes were not treated in sufficient detail. So uh, uh, what we have done, one, one aspect of our paper is that in our paper, we have put in a lot of computational effort to fill in this gap. And this is not just a technical gap um, because rotation from the 4D point of view acts like a new charge. Uh, and from the 5D point of view, it gives uh, you know, the, the more details about the the, uh, I mean, it changes the metric of the BMPV black hole and so on. So um, it adds a lot of details uh, to this uh, story. So this is, uh, although it may look like it's some technicality, but it is, it, it is technicality, but also uh, physically very relevant. There were related confusions in the past. So it's important to resolve this, uh, this issue. Okay. And also these authors only looked at the simplest uh, model. Uh, we look at a wider class of uh, n equal to four models. And uh, as you will see that uh, even on the microscopic side, the generalization is uh, not completely uh, straightforward. Okay, so what are these models? So uh, Sayantan was asking. Uh, so I will explain the more details of the model later, but uh, here let me just say uh, a few things about it. So uh, exact calculation of microscopic indices for n equal to four supersymmetric string theories has made, has been, has seen enormous progress over the years. I mean, especially in the, the first decade of 2000, uh, Ashokson and Strominger group and so on, they did a lot of progress on, on these things. Um, uh, so there is a rich class of models. These models are called CHL. C CHL stands for three authors, Chaudhary, Hockney, Likin. Uh, these models provide a very rich arena uh, for such, such discussions. Uh, uh, so for a class of CHL models, uh, we will be, dis I mean, we will be only discussing uh, a class of these models. Actually, the, the number of these models is uh, quite large. Um, only a small class of these models we will be discussing. Uh, these 
the the black holes in these models can be described in terms of six dimensional two comma zero supergravity and this supergravity is uh, supergravity coupled to number of tensor multiplets okay so we have six dimensional theory um, einstein plus uh, three form field uh, and then you couple it to number of uh, tensor multiplets so this is the the setup we will be uh, working with okay and to begin with, we will just start by looking at this theory and the associated here modes. So this is how we will start. And then slowly we will develop uh, uh, the puzzle. And so slowly we will develop uh, the, the, the features of, uh, of, uh, of this uh, uh, discussion. But okay, so, uh, uh, Amitav, yeah. uh, so why particularly you have studied this model in this context, any particular uh, yeah, yeah. motivation exactly. or something? Yeah, yeah. So the motivation is that, uh, you see, we wanted to resolve this puzzle. So um, so there is an apparent counter example that BMPV black hole in flat space versus BMPV black hole in top net space have different microscopic indices. Mm -hmm. uh, so we wanted to resolve this problem for a slightly more general class of models. And we can only work with models for which such counting is known. Uh, okay, we cannot okay, work okay, okay, okay. So these are the models for which the counting is known. Where it is known. Okay. The counting is known, yeah, that's the idea. Okay, so uh, so then uh, comes the natural question, like how do we go about constructing the hair, which hair to cut, and uh, what kind of uh, black hole hair to construct, and so on. Okay, so this is in some sense an endless discussion because we don't have any sort of classification of all possible hair that a black hole can have. So discussing all possible here is uh, is the hard problem and perhaps not a good problem. I mean, this is um, you know, maybe a futile exercise. Uh, partly depends on the definition, what you call here and so on. Mm, but what these authors uh, were able to show is that uh, the indices, as far as indices matching is concerned, matching may be possible once you have a knowledge of the right number of here. Once you know few here, then you know that these are the hairs which will contribute to this part of the partition function or this part of the partition function. And that way you remove those parts and this way you will be able to match the 4D and 5D uh, indices. Okay, so, so schematically I show this in this figure. So there is a black hole. It admits all possible A, B, C, D types of hair. And what we will be interested in is a class of hair which we know how to construct and which we know how to count. And we make no claim about uh, uh, whether we have counted all possible hairs, whether there are more here, we don't know anything about that. Okay, so um, so for given for the two black holes that we will study, we will only discuss these three types of hair. So the first one is called Garfinkel Vachaspati here. Uh, the second one is uh, form field here, and the third one is uh, fermionic uh, uh, here. Okay, so is the idea. Uh, clear, basic idea clear, what we are trying to do? Yes. Thanks. Okay, so this is the one slide summary of these uh, two papers that uh, Sen et al. did. So you can think of BMPV black hole in flat space as the left-hand side of this picture. So this uh, black is the black hole and box is my flat space. And uh, the student was asking, what is the top net space? So I said, there is a circle at infinity and this circle smoothly shrinks to zero size. So this is the picture of top net. And in top net, we have put this uh, black hole, uh, same black hole we have put, okay? So this is the BMPV black hole in flat space. This is BMPV black hole in top net space. Okay, so now what happens is that when you start constructing here, um, very roughly, okay, this is not the precise answer, but very roughly what happens is that BMPV black hole in flat space does not admit uh, here okay or it admit less number of here you can say it like this but when you put the same black hole in top net space because of properties of the top net space it admits a lot of hair so this is what i have shown with this blue wavy lines okay so the aim will be the aim of this project was really to construct these blue wavy lines we construct the the hair modes corresponding to these blue wavy lines and then we show that uh, 5D partition function is equal to a 4D partition function divided by the contribution from the wavy lines. Okay, so if you, if you want to only focus on the black hole, then you want to get rid of this wavy lines. This is the idea. So 5D partition function 
which is the microscopic indices of the 5D black hole is 4D indices, 4D partition function divided by the here partition function. Okay, so this is the, the, the picture to keep in mind. This is what we will be doing uh, in the next uh, uh, few slides. Okay, so uh, questions, comments on this part? So the last uh, thing you have mentioned, this 5D partition function, this yeah. connection, is this a generic uh, statement for this kind so, of setup? Yeah, yeah. This is generally in the sense that, um, uh, so, okay, so this is a little bit simplified, but uh, what will happen is that BMPV black hole will also admit some here. So what you will do is that you will remove the here contribution from 5D partition function also. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here removed, 5D partition function and here removed 4D partition functions are expected to match uh, okay. because the black hole is the same uh, at the center. Okay. So, yeah. So, so from just, that connection, this uh, relationship was derived. This this relationship was yeah exactly. This is what these authors uh, did in uh, two uh, papers. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's in separate papers, they had constructed the 5D partition function. In separate papers, they had constructed 4D partition function. But what they showed is that by this picture, one can relate the two uh, partition functions. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so our project is uh, almost the same as what these people so, did. Uh, like in your case, you will probably compute this here partition function. Explicitly. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so exactly. So BMPV black hole partition function is known. BMPV black hole partition function in dominant space is known, and we will just compute the here partition function and show that when we divide by the here partition function, the two things match. Okay, exactly. Okay, so uh, so now let me uh, present the supergravity analysis. Actually, this is the most detailed part of my talk. I have spent a lot of time on these slides, so uh, please ask me questions, comments on this part. Okay. So when we start doing supergravity, we have to ask what are the fields. Uh, and six dimensional two comma zero supergravity coupled to n t number of tensor multiplets has many fields. Okay, this is not an easy theory. This is if you look at the Lagrangian in the old papers, you will get scared. <laughs> it's, uh, the paper itself is very complicated to read, and the, the Lagrangian is very difficult to uh, to understand. Actually, actually they don't even write the Lagrangian. It's a self dual form, so Lagrangian is not known. Anyway, so the equation, the supergravity is, is complicated. Uh, what are the fields? So in the bosonic sector, there is metric, uh, there are self-dual and anti-self-dual two-form fields, and there are lots of scalars. Okay, in the fermionic sector, there are gravity nodes, um, because there are two comma zeros, so there are, depending on how you count, there are two gravity nodes, and uh, 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 lots of Majorana fermions, okay, which are the supersymmetric partners of these uh, scalars. Okay, so now uh, we will we will not be interested in the most complicated uh, solutions of this theory. Okay, actually one can work with very simple uh, setup. So this the setup we will be working with is uh, is where the scalars are set to constants. So none of these scalars actually matter, and uh, all the spin half fermions are set to zero. So all these Majorana fermions will be set to zero. Okay, so once you do this, then the theory becomes manageable. You can write down simple equations. Okay, you can write down R mu nu equal to this uh, and gravity nu equations and so on. Okay, moreover, uh, uh, to uh, make connection to the microscopic discussion, we will only be discussing supersymmetric uh, objects. So these objects preserve one quarter uh, supersymmetry. So they are, uh, uh, like they preserve four supercharges out of 16 supersymmetries of the theory. So only these objects we will be looking at. Okay, and once you restrict to only these setups, the equations are very manageable. And, and uh, yeah, uh, anyone with the sufficient amount of effort can, can uh, solve them and uh, study them. Okay, so now, so now I have described the setup, uh, questions, comments on this part of the talk. What is the... Do people understand? The students understand the setup? Any question or comments? If you have, please ask. Sir, if we, yeah, uh, please, please ask. If we, uh, if we preserve more symmetries, uh, your theory will still be carried over? 
Um, out of uh, four, if we preserve more uh, more supersymmetries. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, if you preserve, let's say, eight supersymmetries, uh, then the the solutions will be simpler uh, because uh, because you have put more constraints. But actually, it will be a bit too simple. Like what we want is that we want our black holes, the BMPV black hole and BMPV black hole in top nut, to be solutions to this theory. So. Uh, so those things only preserve four of the sixteen supersymmetries. One cannot, one cannot go, one cannot make it more simpler than this. I guess. Okay. So I think you guys have actually checked and found that this is the option. Actually, I will, I will show. Like maybe. Yeah. I otherwise, have... I can't able to understand that why particularly four. Why? Yeah. Uh, okay. Let me let me say it like this. Um, uh, you see, uh, like this, when I say this, uh, when I made this statement, the exact calculation of microscopic indices for n equal to four supersymmetry has seen a lot of progress. Actually, I should say for what objects. So in this theory, uh, half BPS objects are counted and quarter BPS objects are counted. So uh, we will be interested in quarter BPS objects. So that's why uh, we- Okay, okay, okay. Now I get it. Okay, so now uh, just to show you uh, what are these two black holes. Okay, so uh, the first one is the BMPV black hole and the second one is BMPV black hole in top nut. So let me explain what is the BMPV black hole. Actually, since there are students, let me just say some general things about BMPV black hole. So in 95, uh, Strominger and Wafa discovered their very famous black hole, which is called the Strominger Wafa. And this black hole has only three uh, electric charges. Otherwise, it is not uh, rotating or anything. It is static, uh, supersymmetric uh, black hole. Um, uh, and uh, at that time, it was thought that uh, rotating supersymmetric black holes do not exist because one can prove similar theorems in four dimensions that rotating four dimensional black, supersymmetric black holes do not exist. But these four authors, uh, Breckenridge, Myers, Peet, and Wafa, they constructed a black hole which was rotating and supersymmetric, but in five dimensions. Okay, so this uh, was a very important uh, discovery. And uh, uh, Strominger Wafa analysis was generalized within days, <laughs> literally within days. Uh, they generalize this to the rotating black hole and uh, uh, very impressive progress happened during those weeks uh, in the black hole physics. Okay, so the rotating metric is not particularly complicated, but for this talk, I will only focus on the non-rotating uh, case. So non-rotating case is really the strominger of a setup. Uh, and I have made it even more simpler by setting the three charges equal uh, to each other. Okay, so this is the metric. So this is a five dimensional BMPV black hole written in a six dimensional language, written in six dimensional supergravity. Uh, so this is BMPV black hole in flat space. So this is the flat space. So WI, WI, these are the four flat coordinates. Uh, and then there is a harmonic function psi of R, which multiplies this flat space. And there is a inverse of the harmonic function, which multiplies uh, the, the U and V directions. Okay, so this is written in the six dimensional form. Uh, but it describes, I mean, so it's a six dimensional black string which describes the five dimensional uh, black hole. Okay, and u is x5 minus t, v is x5 plus t, and this function psi uh, is, uh, is this function here, one plus r0 over r, where r is uh, some sort of radial coordinate constructed out of uh, w's. Okay, it's, 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 not this, it's not the standard radial coordinate, but, uh, uh, but closely related to that. I mean, if you do the W1 squared, W2 squared, W3 squared, W4 squared, uh, you get a slightly different radial coordinate. Uh, but so this R I, is, I's are basically one, two, three. Uh, zero, no, one, two, three, four. So this is one, four two, dimensional. Three, four. Okay, okay, okay. Four dimensional flat space. Yeah. Yeah. So four coordinates here and U and V are the two coordinates here. So this is how they are solutions to this six dimensional supergravity. Okay. Uh, so the 5D version uh, of BMPV black. So this is sorry. This is the 4D BMP. This is the 5D BMPV black hole. Now the 4D version of the BMPV black hole is obtained by 
replacing this dwi dwi so this is the flat space metric you replace this flat space metric with topnet metric okay this is what we will do and this is the topnet metric so topnet metric is uh, uh, is uh, there is a vibration so there is a circle so the circle is x4 circle um, and this x4 circle is fibered over uh, the other three coordinates uh, flat space coordinate uh, r theta and phi so there is this vibration cosine theta uh, d phi okay and again it has the same structure as this one so there is a, a harmonic function this is a harmonic function on the three dimensional space one over r you see and uh, the inverse of the harmonic function uh, is here okay so this this r is really the three dimensional uh, uh, r like uh, r theta phi of uh, three dimensional spherical coordinate uh, and chi r has really that interpretation. And this r is also the same, but it has a slightly different interpretation in four dimensions. So, so this is the reason I was saying that in four dimensions, the radial coordinate is slightly different from the, uh, the, the standard radial coordinate that you're used to, but it is exactly the three-dimensional uh, radial coordinate, okay, uh, from the top net space point of view. Okay, so now, uh, as I was saying, one can take the near horizon limit of these and these two black holes will have exactly the same uh, near horizon limit. Near horizon limit is r going to zero. So in the r going to zero, this function uh, dominates and uh, uh, the, 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 the metric, I mean, it's a small calculation, you will see that uh, the, the metrics become exactly the same. I mean, the r4 part disappears and some small changes of coordinates, one can see that uh, the metrics are exactly the same. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is uh, uh, what I wanted to say about the setup and the black hole questions comments uh, up to this part. Any question, comments, or sir, sir, in the previous slide, what does R four represent? Is it four dimensional radius? This uh, yeah, R4. Yeah, R4. Yeah, R4 is the size of the S1 at infinity. So uh, uh, so X4 is the, so, so remember dominant space is asymptotically R3 times S1. So, so S1. we have to specify the size of S1. The size of S1 is uh, two pi times R4. So it's the radius of the radius of the S1 circle at infinity. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, so um, so what we will do is that we will construct bosonic here on 5D black hole. We will construct fermionic here on 5D black holes. We will construct bosonic here on 4D black holes and bosonic fermionic here on 4D black holes. Okay, so these are my next eight slides. So I will tell you how do we construct these uh, bosonic 5D, fermionic 5D, bosonic 4D, fermionic 4D here, okay? So the bosonic here is uh, is the is the cleanest uh, in some sense. It's the most easy to understand. So this is uh, by the method called Garfinkel Vajaspati transform. This was the method that was discovered by these authors, uh, Garfinkel and Vajaspati, um, in the context of cosmic strings. Uh, but later it has found use in uh, black hole physics. Okay, so this is a solution generating technique that adds wave-like deformations uh, on a black hole. So given a solution, you do this transform, you get new uh, exact solution. And as you know, there are books about exact solution generating techniques. Uh, uh, which one to use, that is the trick, you know, that is what one has to understand. Uh, so this Garfinkel Vajaspati is what we have to use uh, in this uh, context. Okay, so Garfinkel Vajaspati technique uh, uh, has very stringent uh, requirements. So the requirements are that you have to have a vector field Km, uh, which is null, which is hypersurface orthogonal, and which is killing. So only when these properties are satisfied, you can construct a uh, uh, new solution from the known solution. And if you have done a course in general relativity, then you will immediately appreciate that these conditions are very difficult to meet. Uh, like in four dimensions, very difficult to find null killing vectors. Okay, I mean all the solutions that you study in your in your GR course never have null killing vectors in four dimensions. 
And even if you manage to find null killing vector solutions, they will not be hypersurface orthogonal. So, so this is this technique is quite stringent. Uh, uh, it applies to the BMPV uh, and BMPV in top net. So once these conditions are met, then the transformation is very simple. So the transformation is G prime is G plus T times KM KN where T is a, a box of T equal to zero. So T is a solution such that T is a scalar such that box of T is zero, where box is with respect to this, this GMN. So this GMN is the Einstein tensor. No, 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 GMN is the metric. So this, oh, is, the achha, metric. this, this is the metric. Yeah. So this and is the trans yeah, transformation technique. This T is your scalar field. Yeah, T is, T is the scalar field. And this box is with respect to the old metric. So oh, okay, GMN okay, okay, okay. Yeah. box is with respect to the old metric. So, so this is, so you see, given, given the metric GMN, you deform the metric in a null direction by this T K M K N. Uh -huh. And this will be a new metric. This is the idea. It adds this, this adds, KM, KM, KN are the normal vectors, I think. These are the, so this is the vector. So oh, this, this, have, this is the vector field. Yeah, you are talking about okay. So you have to, so a solution has to admit such vectors, which is very difficult. But once the solution admits such vector, then this is how the techniques. This so is the techniques. Uh, maybe not when I like uh, related, but uh, it looks like some some way we sometimes write induced metric. We know the G mu nu equal to H mu nu plus N mu N mu. It looks like similar. Yeah. Okay. It is similar. Uh, also, um, there is something called Kerr-Child form of the, yeah, yes, uh, of yes. the solution. It looks also very similar to that. Yeah. But okay, but one has to make a distinction. You see, the distinction is that this vector should be null. So uh, that is different from the induced metric discussion. True, 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 true. true. And it is different from this Kerr-Child discussion because the vector is killing. So yeah, the yeah. Kerr-Child form, the vector is not killing. So in, in so, every, it is a very like very complicated setup. <laughs> well, I mean, you see the the okay. I will not say complicated. I will say that it is very rare to find. Yeah, the requirement is very rare, actually. Yeah, requirement is very stringent. Yeah. But if you are able to do this, and this is the technique, uh, and the technique itself is very similar. Yeah, very simple. Sir. It's very simple, but the requirement meeting the requirement is not easy. Okay. Yeah. So actually with Yogesh and Bipali, who was a student at, uh, at NYSEG, uh, we have done many papers on this uh, Garfinkel with his party. Yeah, I saw that. I know that. That's why I mean. Yeah. So Dipali did her PhD thesis on this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now uh, um, in the six dimensional metric, the metric that I have written, uh, this vector uh, partial U uh, satisfies all these conditions. So the vector field partial view is uh, hypersurface orthogonal. Nothing depends on U, so it is killing and it is null because there is no UU component in the metric. You see, okay, I mean, if, if there is a VV component, uh, but uh, even if you even if you take the inverse, there is no UU component uh, in the metric. So the the uh, the partial U vector is uh, a null hypersurface orthogonal and uh, killing. So, so one can add a deformation T, uh, which is independent of U uh, to this uh, metric and new solution possesses the same number of killing symmetries, same, same number of uh, uh, symmetries and uh, details. Okay, so this is the deformation. Okay, so, so the deformation is delta, uh, delta only adds the v com v v component to the metric so v v component changes uh, and uh, it changes by this uh, amount so there is this psi function which i was mentioning earlier and this t is the function that appears uh, here t is the deformation and t satisfies this box equation and box in this case the box just becomes the box on flat space becomes because u and v are null so uh, they don't matter actually only the only the w coordinates uh, matter okay so then 
uh, what we do, I mean, so already you see there is a lot of choice here. There are lots of here depending on uh, what T one chooses and so on. So uh, it turns out that we only work with this, uh, this function. So T is a function of V and W and we work with only Fi times Wi. Okay, and this is, uh, uh, this is, actually it turns out that this is the only thing that you can work with, but this is rich enough uh, for us. One can, uh, like in the early days, uh, Dhabolkar and other people have done a very exhaustive analysis of what kind of deformations can be added. And we just borrow the results from those papers. And from those, those papers, one, one sees that there is only FI, WI, uh, is what one can uh, add. One cannot add uh, more things. Okay, but but this is very rich. I mean, you see, there are four arbitrary functions fi, which are periodic in v, which you can add uh, as deformation. So there are four arbitrary scalar functions, which is remarkable. So you have a black hole solution. On one hand, you have this no hair theorem, which says that black hole cannot have hair. Uh, but on the other hand, I am saying is that if you take this uh, BMPV black hole and uh, look at it from the six dimensional perspective, then by this very simple technique, you can add four arbitrary scalar functions uh, to, this, uh, to this black hole. Okay, so this is the graphical Vachaspati uh, technique. Now questions, comments uh, on this part? If not, then I will move on to the fermionic, uh, fermionic 5D. So uh, uh, why you are saying that V is the null coordinate? Oh, achha, 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 achha. because that, yeah. that is one of the criteria that you have mentioned. You, okay. you, you, yeah, for, yeah. So, I mean, you see, these are double null, I mean, these are some sort of, okay. So uh, when, so you see the function here is psi minus one. Yes. So psi minus one is R zero. So when R zero is zero, these are really the, okay, okay. the double null coordinates. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, partial U is a null killing vector. So, yes, true. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, this was the discussion for the bosonic here. Now let me discuss the fermionic here. Fermionic here in 5D. Okay. So as I said, I will discuss four things. Bosonic 5D, fermionic 5D, uh, bosonic 4D, fermionic 4D, and then we will combine all this uh, to, to, to the microscopic discussion. Okay, so right now we are discussing fermionic 5D. So we will solve similarly the fermionic sector equations and obtain the deformation uh, for the gravity now. Uh, all the other fermions I have set to zero, Majorana fermions are all set to zero, so there is only one field to worry about. This is just uh, gravity now. Okay. So what we will do to begin with is that we will work with the undeformed background. Okay, so forget about the Garfinkel which is pretty mode in a, uh, for now. Uh, but once you construct the, the fermionic deformation, you can go back and argue that even if you include the GV mode, nothing changes though. So, but I will not present this argument. This is somewhat uh, difficult argument. Uh, I will not present, but the claim is that uh, Psi alpha that I will present, these are valid solution, even if you deform uh, the background. So uh, to, to simplify things, just look at the undeformed uh, background. So on the undeformed background, the fermionic system uh, admits the following simple solution. So what you do is that you look at the gravity now and set all components of gravity now zero, except the V component. So when V is non-zero, then the field is, uh, is non-zero, but otherwise, when M is not equal to V, then the field is non-zero, but otherwise the field is exactly zero. Okay, so this is a drastic, drastic, drastic simplification. Like almost all components are zero, except one component, which is phi alpha V. And since you want this to be compatible with the killing symmetries, you take this to be independent of U also. So this really makes it very simple. And then you see only equations depend on R coordinate and um, uh, very simple, uh, uh, we'll tell the student within one day, the student comes up with the answer. So uh, possible uh, fermionic here are uh, psi r to the minus three half times the constant spinner or psi, psi r to the minus one half times the constant spinner. So these two eta one, eta two constant spinners are slightly different, uh, but we see that there are like combining 
uh, this we see that there are four independent components for each uh, psi alpha. So there are here possible which are of this type. So these are the fermionic here uh, for 5D black hole. Okay, uh, very good. So questions, comments uh, on this? This is, uh, I mean, if you have if you have worked with fermions, you will not find this discussion difficult, but you have not worked with fermions, then this may look a little bit, uh, little bit difficult. Uh, so yeah. what, is the, what is the difference between eta and eta one and eta two that you have told? Uh, so yeah, they are a projection. I mean, so if you, have, if you have ever worked with killing spinners, generally what happens is that you have some profile and then these uh, constant spinners come, which are projection uh, under some gamma matrix. Yes. Yeah. So, so eta one and eta two are similarly projections under okay, okay. some gamma matrix. Yeah. Any question, comments, or okay? I think you proceed. People will ask question. Okay. Okay. Okay, so so I have actually I have done the difficult part. Now I will just repeat the same story. So now I am doing bosonic uh, 4D. Okay, bosonic 4D. So it's almost exactly the same as before. We do Garfinkel Vachaspati. Uh, so again, partial view is the null vector, uh, null killing vector that we identify. It adds the deformation which is in the GVV direction, and again the same type of deformation V times Y. And in order to make a distinction between the previous and this one, I put a tilde here. So it's the, otherwise it's exactly the same expression. Okay, so now uh, we make even more further simplification. Okay, like we just keep simplifying our life as much as we can. And now we simplify it to the fact that uh, the hair modes that we construct, they are independent of X4, uh, the fourth coordinate on the, uh, on the uh, on the top net space, and then wave equation becomes very simple, and it just becomes uh, uh, the Laplacian in three dimensional space that we study in our electrodynamics course. And uh, one possible set of solution is just linear uh, uh, Cartesian solution, so G i y i. Okay, so this is G i y i is really making connection with this uh, F i w i. Okay, so these are the four uh, d w i, and these are the three d. Uh, Yi, 3D Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so in this case, we see that there are three arbitrary scalar functions with periodic coordinates in V that we can add. Three periodic uh, functions, Gi. So now there is uh, uh, one uh, a very important detail which actually solves the main puzzle. So this is the deformation of the uh, uh, of the harmonic fields uh, on uh, top net space. I mean, these are deformation related to harmonic form fields of top net space. Okay, so let me explain what this is. So, uh, uh, so as we saw, like we were discussing uh, two comma zero supergravity coupled to tensor multiplets. So what we have to do is that we have to construct um, uh, deformations in the tensor multiplet sector. So how the tensor multiplets deform so that uh, you can have here. It turns out that uh, in 5D, you cannot do this. In 5D, uh, uh, the, 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 the required structure is not there. But in 4D, uh, you can do this. And this is because top net space has a self-dual harmonic two form, uh, omega Tn, uh, which I call here. So what you can do is that you can construct this wedge product, dV wedge omega Tn. And this wedge product by construction is anti-self-dual. And uh, this gives rise to um, N deformations in the self-dual, in the anti-self-dual sector, so which is the NT number of tensor multiplets. So uh, this is what we do. So uh, using the top nut harmonic form, one can construct NT number of uh, deformations, which are delta H, uh, S, M, and B like this. Okay, and accordingly, the metric also deforms um, uh, but the metric uh, deformations can be solved in terms of this function h. So the important point is that there are n such h deformations. Okay, so they are both uh, characterized by a same arbitrary n number of functions, uh, which we can uh, we can uh, use. Okay, 
So this was the bosonic 4D and now fermionic 4D. Fermionic 4D, there is no change. Uh, we must solve for psi alpha V, which is independent of U. Uh, it turns out that Taubner space does not bring in any detail. Um, exactly the same equation, literally exactly the same equations come. Um, and uh, once again, we have the same uh, same here mode, phi al psi alpha V1 and psi alpha V2 that I showed uh, earlier. Okay, so as I was saying, Taubner space does not change the fermionic deformations at all. And uh, same, exactly the same functions appear uh, as before. Okay, so now these are the possible here modes. Okay, these are the, so now we have to check whether these are here or not. So we have to check whether these here are smooth, uh, are the deformation smooth near the horizon? Um, and the way we do this is that we define suitable coordinates that are smooth across the horizon. And this is the part which is difficult actually. So this is the part that was missing in those papers. Uh, they did it for the static black holes, but here we did it for the rotating black holes and for rotating black holes, Defining suitable coordinates, checking smoothness across the horizon is a very difficult exercise, tedious exercise. Uh, uh, then one has to check whether the these modes preserve supersymmetry. Uh, no additional supersymmetry must be broken, and uh, this is done by killing spinner analysis. And what we do is that we construct killing spinners for all possible deformations and check whether the supersymmetries are exactly the same uh, as before. And then one should also check that the solutions are the here modes are supported only outside the horizon. Uh, they vanish, uh, deformations vanish at the horizon. Uh, and uh, this way we will be sure that uh, our uh, our modes are here modes in the original sense that we wanted. So here modes are here modes which are smooth normalizable solutions with support only outside the horizon. So we have to check whether this is uh, true or not. Okay, so I will present these calculations in the next few slides, but here is the summary. So uh, detailed calculations show that garfinkel vachaspati modes in 5D are not uh, here modes, but in 4D they are. Uh, form field discussion does not apply to 5D black hole because there is no omega Tn, but it applies to 4D black hole. And one can construct n number of, uh, of here. Uh, for fermions, uh, both uh, are valid uh, here modes. Okay, so if there are questions, if there are no questions, comments, and I can present these details, but otherwise I'm happy to take questions now. Okay, I'm roughly halfway through my talk. So, so uh, in uh, GV mode for 5D black hole, uh, we get that it's not a hair mode. So so is it that uh, the 5D black holes don't have any hair or just for this GV case, it doesn't come out to be hair mode? Yeah, so 5D black hole only have the fermions here, which I show here uh, with the arrow. Uh, garfinkel vachasipati modes, uh, they will turn out to not satisfy the smoothness uh, criteria. You will see that these modes are not smooth. Uh, yeah. Okay, so because of this reason, uh, I had drawn the picture uh, like this, see? Uh, like this. So I was saying that in 5D, um, there are very few here, and in 4D, there are lots of here. And uh, this is related to uh, this uh, discussion uh, that uh, Garfinkel Vachaspati modes and form fields modes are not there in 5D, but they are there in, in 4D. Okay, so let me just uh, uh, give you a summary of this uh, supergravity analysis. So in 5D black hole, or here mode uh, are supported outside the horizon. Uh, but when we do the Riemann tensor calculation, you find that the Fi modes uh, blow up at the horizon. So they are not counted as here. Uh, the fermion modes, only the eta one modes uh, are correct here modes. Uh, the eta two modes uh, do not preserve supersymmetry and they are not smooth uh, at the horizon. So they are also not uh, here modes. Um, for 4D black holes, uh, GI are good here modes. So they are three arbitrary scalar functions. Uh, so the psi one, psi two story is exactly the same. Psi one is, uh, is good here, but psi two is not. And because of this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, omega Tn, there are n number of uh, of uh, the uh, uh, tensor sector 
tensor multiplet sector uh, modes. Okay, so this is the summary. So explicit construction of hair modes in 4D and 5D black holes is possible. This is a nonlinear construction. We have not made any simplifications. Nonlinear Einstein's equations we are able to solve. And these are all the hair that we find. So for bosonic, there are no 5D hair, but there are NT plus three uh, hair in 4D. For fermionic, they have equal number of hair. 5D black hole and 4D black holes have equal number of here. So as you can now, as you can see, this NT plus three will be the key key idea that will resolve the puzzle. Okay. So this data will be used for the resolution of the puzzle. Uh, and as I was saying, uh, do other here exist? We don't know the answer to this question. Um, the here that we have constructed is enough for our analysis. Uh, perhaps it's a futile discussion whether all the other hair exist or not, because if they exist, they should better be same number of hair here, same number of hair here, so that uh, they cancel uh, with each other. Okay, so, um, so, so I will stop here for questions, comments. I have finished the, the most detailed part of my talk. Like I have described the motivation and review and discussed the, the, the main supergravity analysis also. So any question now, or comments, please ask. Yeah. Otherwise, you can proceed, Amitabh. Okay. So, okay. so, so I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what can we say about the stability of these hairs uh, around these black holes? Uh, well, uh, okay. Uh, nobody has checked the stability, uh, but uh, uh, since these here preserve supersymmetries of the original black hole and supersymmetric objects are believed to be stable. Uh, I think they are stable. Um, like it will be very surprising if these objects turn out to be unstable, uh, but nobody has checked. But since they preserve supersymmetry, there are good reasons to believe that they should be stable. Oh, okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, question, more questions? Okay, so if there are no questions, uh, so uh, now I will present the microscopic part. And uh, this is the part that exactly overlaps with uh, uh, Justin and Aradita paper. Okay, the supergravity analysis that we did was like extra work we did, and they did something else extra, but this uh, hair removal part uh, is exactly the same as in uh, Justin's uh, paper. Okay, so if, let me just say how this project started. So this project started in Chennai, Chennai Strings uh, Conference, Chennai Strings Meeting 2018. So I was giving a talk about my work with uh, Deepali and Yogesh about uh, Garfinkel with Chaspati modes uh, that I, uh, we, I mean, we have, we have various versions of this Garfinkel with Chaspati modes technique. And I was saying that uh, these techniques can be used to construct hair modes uh, for black hole. And then Suresh Govind Rajan was one of the uh, audience. And he said that uh, the partition function is very closely related to half BPS partition function. And this sort of uh, caught my attention. And I started studying about the half BPS partition function uh, for type 2B on K3. And uh, uh, after some studying, I understood that indeed the half BPS partition function and the hair partition function are exactly the same. They are one over eta to the 24. And if we think in the right terms, then this is essentially what Sen et al. had done in 2009. They gave an explanation for this eta rho to the power uh, 24 from the hair analysis. Okay, and the, 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 the counting works very simply. So from the previous slides, uh, we okay, from this slide, you see that uh, the 4D black hole has NT plus three extra uh, hair modes. And uh, if you count uh, properly, then uh, these NT plus three give rise to 21 plus three uh, extra uh, bosonic modes in the setup that uh, Ashok Sen and other people looked at. And 21 plus three is exactly 24. And this 24 goes into this to explain the, the hair partition function. So if one thinks in the right way, then I mean, although the papers are very complicated and a lot of details about various things, but if you sort of distill everything down to 
uh, down to uh, these numbers, then this is essentially what these people uh, did. So they made the observation that on K3, there are 21 tensor multiplets and 21 plus three number of bosonic hair modes are possible. And this gives 24, which matches with this half BPS partition function of the, of the, uh, of the compactification. Okay, so um, uh, since uh, Suresh was with us, uh, uh, he explained us uh, uh, what to do with the more complicated models. So then we started reading about the CHL models. So CHL stands for Chaudhary, Hockney, Likin, or the folds. Uh, the key feature of these models is that they have smaller number of uh, vectors in four dimensions. Okay, and then the K3 compactification. So here I was saying that in six dimensions, the number of tensor multiplets is 21 for the K3 model. Uh, for these CHL models, the key feature is that the number of tensor multiplets is less. So it will be like seven or 10 or something, something of that type. Uh, so that is the key idea. It has smaller number of uh, vector multiplets uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, 4D, 6D, whichever way you think uh, uh, upon K3 compactification of type 2D theory. And they have the same amount of supersymmetry. Okay, so you have the freedom of changing the number of tensor multiplets to some extent. Okay, so these models are obtained by orbifolds of type 2D theory on K3 times S1 times S1 tilde. Um, the orbifold group acts on uh, the cohomology of K3. So number of the forms uh, are changed with up to minus signs and factors under the action. Uh, and it acts on um, S1 by the shift. So the, the, it acts on the cohomology of K3 and it also acts on the uh, S1. So orbifold action involves shift along the, the S1. So to obtain the lower dimensional supergravity description, uh, only the invariant fields are kept. So fields which are invariant under the orbifold action, only those things are to be kept. And thus in 60, we only see uh, possible hair modes which are G invariant. Okay, so, so take an example. So if you take the Z4 CHL models, CH, CHL model, then the number of tensor multiply is seven. And then according to our counting seven plus three, only 10 uh, hair modes are possible. And uh, the hair partition function for half BPS or hair partition function or the half BPS partition function is this object, eta to the four, eta two rho squared and eta four rho to the four. So how in the world we are going to explain or understand how this uh, uh, seven is related to this, uh, this uh, uh, function. So this was the puzzle. So this was the puzzle that we started our project with. Okay, so you see, this is a very deep, uh, I mean, deeper than, uh, than uh, what uh, uh, those authors looked at in 2009. More difficult than you can say. Okay, so questions, comments. So now I will tell you the resolution of the puzzle that we have proposed. Questions, comments? So you please proceed. Any question, if then please ask. Okay, no. Okay, uh, so I will present the resolution for Z2 model. Z2 model is the simplest, and then I will present it for Z4, and then you will understand the general idea uh, how this uh, is working. Okay, so let us schematically denote uh, K3 directions to be Y. So you have, K, type 2B compactified on K3. So there are K3 and then the remaining six directions. So you think of Y as the K3 directions and the remaining six directions as X. So X are the remaining six dimensions. Okay, so then in type 2B theory, you have Raymond Raymond fields and a lot of other junk. Uh, so this, all these things, they depend on X and Y coordinates, both six dimensional coordinates and the K3 coordinates. Now, what these authors did in uh, 1995 was to show that uh, if you decompose C4 into C2 gamma, omega gamma, where omega gamma are the self-dual and anti-self-dual harmonic forms in the cohomology of K3, 
then these things precisely give rise to tensor multiplets in uh, in lower dimensions in six dimensions okay so these are harmonic forms on k3 and these are the tensor multiplets in 60 okay see understand this so x y 60 4 k3 k3 details are here and 60 details are here okay so since these are harmonic what you get is some simple mathematical structure in 60 and this is the uh, uh, the tensor multiplets uh, in 60. Okay, so now on the cohomology of K3, the orbifold group act. Uh, so let us say the group we are working with is Z2. So it's the, as simple as it can be. So Z2 orbifold group uh, acts. So the action of this group um, is you have to read some paper to figure out that the action. And uh, for this talk, you just have to believe me, the action is that it acts on these omega gammas uh, in such a way such that eight uh, of the eigenvalues are negative and 11 of the eigenvalues are positive. So this is how the group acts. So there are 19 self-dual, anti-self-dual forms on K3. It splits them into 11 plus eight, 11 plus eight. So now, um, now, um, so, so it's, it's see, 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 it splits them like this. So 11, so there are naturally 11 tensor multiplets coming from the C2 gamma, but there are other tensor multiplets coming from B2 and uh, C2. And because type 2B theory has a lot of junk, uh, like uh, B2 form, C2 form, the axion fields and so on. So once you take all of that into account, then you find that there are 13 uh, tensor multiplets. There are 13 tensor multiplets. Okay, and what I showed earlier is that uh, nt plus 3, so 13 plus 3, uh, remember there were a uh, number of tensor multiplets plus 3 is what you have to uh, look for. So if the number of tensor multiplet is 13, then you have 16 uh, here modes uh, on the bosonic sites. So this is what we are. I'm seeing here. So nt plus 3, so there are 16 here modes uh, of this type. So now this is the part which is new and this is our main discovery. Uh, so now because there are eight um, uh, eigenvalues minus one, um, uh, there are eight here modes with boundary conditions which are uh, along the uh, orbifolded circle S1 mod Z2, which satisfy the boundary condition with the minus sign. So if you move uh, two pi along X5, you don't come back to yourself, but you come back to yourself with the minus sign. And this is precisely what makes everything work because there are eight omega gammas which have eigenvalue minus one and now we are proposing boundary conditions uh, for precisely eight of those which has a minus sign so because of this minus sign the c4 uh, doesn't change c4 c4 still remains uh, like a uh, uh, regular field uh, under the shift uh, of two pi uh, along the x5 circle but both these terms pick up the minus sign Okay, so omega gamma picks up a minus sign and C2 picks up a minus sign. So this is the basic idea. So thus we have 16 bosonic hair modes with periodic boundary conditions and eight bosonic hair modes with anti-periodic boundary condition because of this minus sign. And once we understand this, this explains uh, everything. So in correct quantization of charges, periodic modes corresponds to units, even units of momentum and anti-periodic modes correspond to odd unit of momentum. And if you take this into account, then everything works perfectly well. So here is an example. So you see, so there are 16 modes. So you see, these are 16 with even units of momentum. So they contribute Q to the two, Q to the four, Q to the six, Q to the eight and so on. And there are eight modes with anti-periodic boundary conditions. So eight modes, which contributes odd units of momentum. So Q1, Q3, Q5, and so on. And now if you just combine these equations appropriately, you see that they become these uh, functions. So you see, so one minus Q is here. You take one minus Q square from here and one minus Q cubed is here. You take one minus Q to the four from here. So this becomes the product one minus Q to the L uh, to the power minus eight. And then you are only left with these eight powers um, with even uh, numbers. So this is the even numbers. And this gives you eta to the two row and eta to the eight. Okay, but there are some more details, but this is the basic idea and 
what once you appreciate this basic idea it explains uh, uh, everything so indeed we get the hair partition function to be the half vps partition function and this explains uh, how the two partition functions have to be matched so, so this eta is this dedekind eta function Dedic yeah dedekind dedekind eta function which enters in the half vps yes, 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 yes. yes. yeah okay so earlier I was mentioning a Z4. So let us let me just explain how the Z4 works and I will end my talk. So the calculation works for all geometric CHL model. Um, and uh, I keep emphasizing that both uh, our group and Justin's group discovered this almost at the same time. Uh, for example, if you take the Z4 model, then it turns out that there are 10 modes with no twist and T7. So seven plus three is 10. So there are 10 modes with no twist. Um, the orbifold fold action, one has to read some paper to understand how the orbifold fold action acts, but uh, it acts like this, that uh, four modes have two pi i over four twist. Then six modes had two times two pi i over four twist and four modes have three times two pi i over four twist. So if you take this into account, um, then see the here modes. So even, I mean, if you, multiples of four, so four to 12, and there are 10 modes of this type. So these are the tens. And then there are modes with the two pi i over four twist. So these are these ones, see these ones. And then there are modes with the two times two pi i over four twist. So these are these ones, see there with the power six. And then there are four modes with three times two pi. So these are these ones. So these are the ones with the uh, three units of uh, momentum in some uh, sense. Okay, and now if you just uh, look at this carefully, you see that it combines into uh, these eta products. So you see, so one minus Q is here, one minus Q square is here, one minus Q is here, one minus Q to the four is here. So if you just take all this common, then you get the eta product with power four. So this is my eta to the four. Okay, now look at, uh, so this, this line is gone. Um, so now we are looking at this line. From this line, only two powers are left. Uh, and from this line, six powers are left. Okay, so from this line and from this line, we can pick out the even uh, numbers and they will come with power minus two. So this is the eta two, eta two squared. And then only this line is left with power four and this will give rise to eta four. Uh, so eta four to the four. Okay, so indeed by this argument, we get the partition function uh, to be the half PPS uh, partition function. Okay, so this is all I wanted to say. So now let me just end with the summary and feature direction. So here removal for CHL model is a slightly more complicated puzzle than uh, what uh, these authors solved in 2009. So the puzzle for 4D and 5D index mismatch is more challenging uh, because of the presence of the twisted sectors of the CHL model. Uh, we identified here modes in the untwisted as well as twisted sector. And we showed that after removing the contributions of the hair modes from the microscopic partition function, the 4D and 5D horizon partition functions uh, agree. Um, uh, although I did not present the details here, but special care is taken to present details on the smoothness analysis of hair modes for the rotating black hole, uh, thereby filling an essential gap uh, in the literature. Okay, this is not just a technical exercise. There is a lot of physics uh, uh, here. Uh, so now let me just end. This is my last slide. So I will just end with uh, work in progress. So. Uh, so now we are generalizing this study for the twisted partition function. So using ideas that are central to the CHL model, um, the orbifolding folding by an abelian group, there is a richer class of uh, partition functions that one can define. So these are called twisted twining partition functions. So they were discovered by Ashok Sen and Suresh Govind Rajan in 2010. Uh, the 4D, 5D counting is known for the twisted twining partition function. And a similar hair removal calculation is possible. And this is what we are working on now, but because of COVID, everything has been delayed. Uh, actually the, the, the calculations are almost done, but uh, we are still uh, not able to properly communicate with each other. So it will take some time for our paper to come out. So this is a project we are doing with uh, Abhishek, who is at IIT Bhuneshwar, uh, Sutapa, who is now in the USA, 
Shanmuga Pia, CMI, and Suresh Govind Rajan. So, uh, so that's all. Thank you very much. I will stop here. Uh, thank you, Amita, for giving the nice talk and presenting this black hole hair removal thing because this was not spoken before in the forum. Uh, if there is any specific question or comments or any query, please ask uh, now. And thank you for giving this talk. Yeah, so any question, comments? People may have asked a little bit elementary questions, uh, but like, uh, yeah, like if you, uh, anything you can ask. Yeah. Yeah, any, any, I mean, I, I understand the students are there and uh, actually I was expecting more students because I know people in NICER are working on these topics. I mean, people in IIT Bhuneshwar are also working on this topic. So uh, if those students could have joined, it would have been nicer, but uh, questions, comments? If not, then uh, 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 Thank you, Amita, for the contribution. And uh, once this will be posted in the channel, I will share the link with you. And thank you for uh, uh, giving this contribution. I, I'm, I'm, I will ha be ha happy to listen to another thing that you have mentioned before starting the talk uh, regarding the DC pair. Uh, so once you are ready from your side, let me know and then uh, I will organize something. Yeah, I'm yeah, so very happy to know about this thing. Yeah, sometime in March or so, like once See, the yeah, sure, sure. is over, then. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. So okay. stay safe and healthy. That's very important. And uh, yeah, hope to Thank meet some you. sometime soon. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Anthony. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. Bye.